today's discussion, we're going to take a look at the solar system and the solar system data chart, which is in your reference tables. Let's get started. Here's a diagram which depicts our solar system. Let's take a look at what is here. We start with one star, which we call the Sun, which is the center of gravity for our solar system. It is what keeps everything together. Then we have Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars. Those are the inner four planets. They are small and dense and rocky, and we call them the terrestrial planets. Beyond the orbit of Mars is an asteroid belt, a vast band of thousands and thousands of chunks of rock orbiting the Sun. And then we have Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. These large gaseous planets are known as the Jovians. Additionally, we have moons. Only one moon is shown on this diagram, and that is Earth's moon. But be aware that there's dozens of other moons orbiting the other planets. Then we have outer solar system objects like Pluto, which is considered a dwarf planet, which actually orbits the sun in a belt of asteroids similar to the asteroid belt, which is known as the Kuiper belt. There's many, many objects similar to Pluto orbiting the sun at the edges of our solar system. And then, of course, we also have objects like comets. These are icy bodies which orbit the sun as well. Altogether, these objects make up our solar system. Now, please keep in mind that this diagram is not drawn to scale. In fact, the distances in this picture are way smaller than they actually are, and the sizes are not exactly appropriate. The artist of this diagram chose to put them all closer together and in appropriate sizes so it would be easier to read. In our reference table, we have a diagram called the Solar System Data Chart, which looks like this. In the rest of this video, we're going to take a minute and look at what information is on here and what each of these numbers actually means. So get your handout ready, and let's start filling it in. The first object that's discussed is the Sun. The Sun is the only star in our solar system, and it is the gravitational center which most objects orbit around. I say most because there are many moons in our solar system which actually orbit planets and not the Sun directly. Then we have the next four planets, Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars, the inner four planets. These are called the terrestrial planets and they have a lot of characteristics in common. Specifically, they are smaller in size, they have higher densities, and are very rocky. If you look all the way to the right, you'll see the density column, and you'll notice that all the densities are above 3.9. This is extremely dense. Then we have the outer four planets, which include Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. And these are huge, low-density, gaseous planets, meaning they're made primarily of gases. We call these the Jovian planets. If you look all the way at the right, you'll notice that these densities are actually much lower. In fact, you'll notice that Saturn has a density of 0.7 grams per cubic centimeter, which is less than that of water. So imagine having a massive pool, Saturn would actually float in the pool. Now between the terrestrial planets, the first four, and the Jovian planets, the outer four, we have our asteroid belt. The asteroid belt exists between the orbits of Mars and Jupiter. Let's talk about what each column represents. First, we have mean distance from the Sun. This is the average distance that the object is from the Sun. So for example, you'll notice the Earth is on average about 150 million kilometers away from the Sun. Now the reason it's an average is because we know that when planets orbit the Sun, they do so along oval paths. And therefore, sometimes they're a little closer and sometimes they're a little further. So we have to use an average. The next column is the period of revolution, measured in days and years. This is essentially how long it takes the object to orbit the Sun one time. You'll notice for Earth it's 365.26 days, or one year. Then we have the period of rotation at the equator. This is the amount of time it takes for the object to spin on its axis, like a top. So if you imagine the Earth is spinning while it is revolving around the Sun, it takes the Earth 23 hours, 56 minutes, and 4 seconds to spin once, or one day. 
Next we have eccentricity of orbit. Eccentricity describes the shape of the object's orbit or the shape of the path that it takes when it goes around the Sun. Lower numbers, closer to zero, have more circular orbits. Higher numbers, closer to one, have more stretched out oval orbits. Notice how every orbit is slightly different. Then we have the equatorial diameter, measured in kilometers. This is the distance through the object. So imagine going in one side of the Earth's equator, through the core, and out the other side. That is the diameter. The Earth has a diameter of just under 13,000 kilometers, making it the largest of the four terrestrial planets, but also much, much smaller than the Jovian planets. Then we have the mass of the object compared to the Earth. So you can see, for example, that Mars, the mass of Mars is about 11% that of the Earth, whereas Jupiter is about 317 times that of the Earth, much, much more massive. The final column gives us density, and I want you to keep in mind that the density of water is 1.0 grams per cubic centimeter, and so this gives you a comparison. Anything larger than that 1.0 would sink in water, as it's heavier, and anything lower, like Saturn, would actually float in water. And so you can clearly see that the first four planets, the terrestrials, Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars, are much more dense than the outer four Jovian planets. Let's take a look at how everything moves in the solar system. Okay, so here we see the massive spiral galaxy that is the Milky Way. And if we zoom in millions and millions of light years, eventually we will come to our local neighborhood, our solar system. You'll start to see the sun appear, and as we get closer, you'll start to see the orbits of the outer planets. And that's what we're looking at right here. So we can see the orbits of the Jovian planets, including Saturn, Jupiter, Uranus, and Neptune. And if you zoom a little closer, you can start to see the terrestrial planets in their orbits, Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars. Zooming out again reveals the orbit of Pluto, and you might notice that Pluto's orbit is going to actually cross Neptune's orbit at one point. Now, in order to see the motions, I want to speed up time a little bit. So we're going to make things go a little bit faster so we can get an idea of how everything is really moving. Okay, go even a little faster in this. So if you notice these numbers up here, we're going up by months here. So time is going by very quickly. And what you'll see is the objects orbiting the sun. And they're all orbiting in the same direction. We're looking down from above here. And what you might notice is that as you get further out from the sun, the planets are moving slower and they take longer to orbit. If we zoom in a little bit, we'll start to see how quickly the terrestrial objects are moving. In fact, they're moving so quickly that I want to slow down time just a little bit and make it a little easier to see. Here we go. So now you'll notice the motions of the inner objects. And what you'll see is Mercury closest to the Sun moves fastest, and then Venus a little slower, and then Earth and Mars. You can also notice that the planets are rotating as well as revolving. So you notice the Earth is rotating very, very quickly here. In fact, we can take a zoom uh, into the Earth and start to look at the motions of the Earth. All right, let's speed time up here. So you can see the Earth spinning very quickly. And what you also notice is the Moon is orbiting around the Earth. Okay, let's slow things down a little bit. Let's go by hours here. And you can see this is the motion. Now if we turn around so we can get the sun in the background, you can start to get an idea of how all of this works. All right, so you notice there's the Earth rotating, and the moon is over here orbiting around it, and at the same time we are orbiting around the sun, which we can see here. And so this is how our solar system works. Make it go a little bit faster. So all the objects are orbiting the sun, and all of them are also rotating or spinning on their axis, and it's all at different speeds. And this is how the solar system is functioning.